Let's see, what is in the news today? Ah, fuck. No, don't pour it out, just put it over there, I'll drink it after. Hi, I'm Jeremy, and welcome to some shitty news. If you're watching this video, chances are you've seen some of these articles recently, and like 63% of the world's population, maybe you have the occasional drink, or more than just an occasional drink, and you're a little bit concerned. But make sure that you stick around to the end, because even if you're in that latter group where you drink a bit more than you should, I'm gonna give you some things to stick in your body that'll help. I mean, I'm not gonna physically give them to you, this is YouTube. It's not Wonka Vision. It's unbelievable. It's a miracle. It's Wonka Vision. I lost my mom to cancer when I was 16, and 10 years ago, my wife lost her father to cancer. And after he died, every single doctor we talked to afterwards asked us if he drank. That was a pretty big red flag to us to make sure that we started to measure our own alcohol consumption. And now we're seeing reports like this, where we see that there's increased pressure put on the government to put cancer labels on alcohol the way that we do with cigarettes, and that no amount of alcohol is safe to consume. Holy shit. The reason why they think we need these labels is because the majority of people don't know that there's any risks at all with consuming a moderate or even a little amount of alcohol. It says that even consuming two drinks a week is risky, which is down from a report that stated that 15 for men and 10 for women was okay in the past. That's a big fucking difference. Three to six drinks increases the risk of various cancers as well as heart disease and stroke. So I know what you're thinking, what the hell has happened that suddenly alcohol is bad for us? Well, that's not how stuff like this works. It's not suddenly bad for us. It's always been bad for us. We just now have a much better understanding of our link between alcohol and cancer. So what do you do? I mean, you can't undrink the alcohol that you've drank. What you've done is in the past, you gotta let that go. And maybe you don't even wanna quit having the occasional drink. That's totally fine. This video is not at all about me trying to tell you to not drink alcohol. That's your own personal choice. You gotta do you. What this video is gonna be about is letting you know that there are some awesome foods out there that can help you not only prevent, but fight cancer. And also, there's one food out there that you really, really need to cut down on. So stick around for the end and I'll let you know what that is. Before we get into this awesome list though, take a moment and subscribe to this channel for more content like this and maybe hit that like button. Also, feel free to let me know in the comments below what you think about this issue. Do you think it's bullshit and stupid and just like government propaganda? What's going on in your head? I would love to know. All fruits and vegetables are generally rich in cancer-fighting nutrients. Think of it this way. The more color they have, the more nutrients they have. That's what it means. And especially target red, green, and orange vegetables. Look for foods that are high in folate. This includes spinach, asparagus, Brussels sprouts, but also whole grains like oats and brown rice, as well as some fortified breakfast cereals. Just make sure you read the label so that they're not also packed with processed and unnecessary sugars. Eating tomatoes have shown a reduced risk in certain cancers, but not only tomatoes, but things like tomato sauce, tomato juice, tomato paste, and salsa. Green tea is another great one that says it slows and prevents the development of some cancers. Grapes and grape juice. I know what you're thinking. That means I can have wine. No because when the wine ferments, it creates alcohol. Alcohol is alcohol is alcohol. Grapes good, wine not so good. When it comes to this, what we're talking about here. Generally speaking, drinking lots of water can help you fight against bladder cancer because it helps dilute the cancer-causing agents that are stuck inside of you. It also causes you to pee a lot more, so it reduces the time that the bad stuff is inside of you. Bad stuff is the medical term, by the way. Beans, beans, the magical fruit. I mean, they really are awesome. They can help protect the body cells against damages that can lead to cancer. Eat them. Eat so many of them. Anything green. Seriously. Any dark leafy vegetables are fantastic, as well as all cruciferous vegetables. There's a reason you've been told to eat your greens your entire life. Do it. Jeremy said so. I'm Jeremy, by the way, in case you missed that. Last but not least, my absolute favorite cancer-fighting food, the Mighty Berry. Pretty much all berries have powerful antioxidants in them that help fight and prevent cancers. Eat them daily. It's like the world's most awesome vitamin because it tastes amazing. Put them in your oatmeal or cereal or whatever you're having for breakfast. And if you're a savory person, they go great in salads, even inside of wraps. They add a little burst of sweet, which is always a nice added flavor. Worst case scenario, just pop them in your mouth as a snack. They're delicious that way too. Put them in a smoothie. I don't care. 
Eat your berries. And now the food that you need to avoid or limit. I know what you're thinking. This is a plant-based channel. He's gonna say meat. Nope. That said, I could do an entire video on what meat does to your body, but I'm not here to tell you about that one today. You can do your own research on that, have your own feelings about that. The one I'm sadly talking about today that I also have a problem with is sugar. So sugar may not cause cancer directly, but it can displace other nutrient-rich foods that help you protect against cancer. What I mean by that is you eat unhealthy snacks as opposed to good snacks. It also increases your calories overall, which can lead to obesity. And people that are excess weight unfortunately have an increased risk for cancer as well. I know what you're saying, fruit has sugar too, and you're not wrong, but it's a much smaller amount and it comes in a vitamin rich package that's packed with fiber and fills you up. So look, no one's expecting you to give up booze, cold turkey, or even at all. But I urge you to do some reading on your own to decide if you want to reduce or eliminate it altogether. I'm going to link that article I showed you at the beginning of the video down in the description below. If you found this video helpful at all, please let me know in the comments below and hit that like button. And subscribe for more content like this. Speaking of which, YouTube thinks you really like this video that I made. So click on it. It's probably fun. Oh yeah, that one is fun. <laughs>